All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to create a uh, design book quickly and easily in CorelDRAW. Um, in order to do this the easiest, I use a macro, which is from Alex Vakulenko. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go to Tools, Macros, say Run Macro, and then under Macros In, we'll find the Thumbnailer um, GMS file. And then there's the main dot start, and we just click run. So that pulls up the Oberon Thumbnailer version 2.1. Uh, you can see down here it's made by Alex Vakulenko from OberonPlace.com. And if I click on that, that'll bring us to his website here. I'll just show you there. If you click on uh, CorelDRAW VBA macros, and then you scroll down his list, it's right here Oberon Thumbnailer. Now this works um, up to version X5, uh, so if you've got an older version, you can just download it straight from here. If you need help getting it to work on newer versions of CorelDRAW, just let me know and I can help you get that taken care of. So I'm in CorelDRAW 2017 here. Um, and first up, we'll just talk about a little bit of, of what's uh, what this does. So the browse is for your source files, and that's... Uh, what files you want to add onto your page. Um, this is going to be a design book that I'm going to create, so I will just go to where I've got those files saved. I'll go to my OneDrive folder, and then I go to my artwork, and I've got my classic collection. I'll just show you how this works on my classic collection of artwork. Now I have the classic collection set up already in folders, so I've got designs separated from full layouts, and under designs, um, I then also have it categorized by um, the different things. So animals, I've got birds, and the birds I even have more categorized. So I can do as much or as little as I want. Uh, just for the sake of time, I'm going to only do a, a small piece. So I'm going to start at birds and click OK. I've got process subfolders checked, so that will actually go through each of the birds folders. So there were cardinals and doves and whatever else there was there. I'm going to look for Corel Draw files um, because that's what I want, but if you had other things like JPEGs or um, other kinds of vector files, you could certainly have it pull in different things. But all of my files that are in these folders are Corel Draw files, so I have to have that selected. Add the folder names and captions. I don't actually like to have the folder names, but if you are curious as to where they came from, you could certainly add those in. Um, I find that it actually ends up being a bit too long for what I want to do, so I'm not going to do that. And I think it's distracting too, so... Um, anyway, so I, I will not do that. Rasterize all thumbnails. What this does is it will take your um, your vector files and convert them to bitmaps automatically for you. That way, if you're doing like a PDF file, um, it can all of your thumbnails will be bitmaps instead of uh, vectors, so that if you were to share it, um, they wouldn't be editable anymore. But I typically will end up rasterizing things before I export out, depending on how I export anyway. And I prefer to be able to actually do my edits within my document, so I don't rasterize. But the options there if you want it. Your thumbnail size. Okay, so depending on your size, it will give you your 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 layout here. So if I were to do a two inch width and two inch height, you'll see that I can only fit three uh, by four of those on a page. And then you've also got your spacing here and your spacing here, and then um, the uh, the page setup it is where. It, you can say how big your page size is, so I'm just going off of a letter size page, 8.5 by 11 inches. But if we were to make this a little bit larger, then you'd be able to have more room, you know, if you went to like a legal size paper or something else. But I'm only printing on letter paper, so that's what I'm going with. And if you wanted to do it horizontally, you just switch this to 11 by 8.5. Okay, so to match my classic collection book that I've already created. Um, I'm actually going to go back to one and a quarter inches and one and a quarter inches. That'll give me a layout of five wide by seven tall. 
I like to have the add file name caption because that's going to give me um, my design number. And the font doesn't matter too much to me because I can always change that later, but if I want to set the font now, you can go ahead and set the font to whatever you want it to be. The thumbnail frame will put a box around your thumbnail. I, um, I don't like to do that for sandblast stuff. However, if I was doing laser etchings, um, where I'm going to want a black background behind everything, I might do that. I might just add a thumbnail frame, and then I could turn all those thumbnails or those frames uh, into black backgrounds. Um, but for this case, I'm I'm not going to do that. And then I'm using inches for my units, um, and that's pretty much everything. So we've got our our source is going to be all of our birds. It's going to bring in all of our CDR files. It's going to um, do all the subfolders spaced off of this and it's going to add our file name. So once I click OK, what it does is it starts importing into a new document all of those files and I can drag this over while it does it so you can see what happens. Um, now it's taking a little bit longer for this to work because I'm recording a video while it's uh, doing it. So the more processing power that you've got the faster it's going to be able to work. Um, <clears throat> and then also, I, I think if I were to have the object manager closed, it would actually go a little bit faster as well. But we'll see what this does down here. It says processing file 29 of 58. So it found 58 birds, and that tells you which file that it's on. So what it does is it brings in those your file, and then it just shrinks it down to that inch and a quarter size. <clears throat> and I might do one, um, well... I guess you can just play with it um, so that you can see how the options work. But maybe on the next one I'll, I'll add in a, a thumbnail frame so that we can see what that looks like. If you need to get out of it, you know, it's not working the way that you want it to, you just hit abort here and you can get out of it. But we're pretty much done. So that created two pages. Our first page here and our second page here. And these are all different birds because that's... Um, the folder that I started with. So if you organize your files first into folders, then when it places them on the page, then you can have those organized. Now, because this is going to be a design book, um, I don't actually want it to say the .cdr anymore. I, all I want is that file name. So it's really easy if you go up to um, <coughs> Edit, Find and Replace, and then you just say Replace Text. You just type in .cdr and you're going to replace it with nothing. So you say replace all, and that will take all of the CDRs out and just leave you with your file names. So there we've got our file names on every page, or not under each one, but it doesn't say CDR anymore. Okay, so now that we've got that done, let's say we wanted to add a little bit of uh, border or flourish to our, our pages. If we go to view page and say page border I typically don't view a page border when I'm working with stones but if I'm doing a design book then I do want to see uh, the border of my page so now that I if I click on each of these I can now see where my page border is the cool thing about um, having pages is over here in the object manager um, there's what's called a master page and so I can create a new master layer and you can either do it for all pages or I can do it on even pages because I'm on an even page if I go back to an odd page then it'll give me the option to create a new master layer for odd pages um, but let's just say I want to do a new master layer for every page so I'm gonna call this layer border okay so this is my border and um, if I then just really easily double click the rectangle tool, it will give me uh, a rectangle the size of my page. And then I can do maybe a contour and bring that in a little bit like this. Break it apart. So you can do any sort of border or whatever that you want to do. Um, but I'll, I'll just do this one really easily. So now I've got this created. And I'm just going to give each corner a little bit of a, uh, a scallop. So I'll click on scallop there and say half inch maybe. And since I've got it locked, 
all of them will, all of them should change uh, once I hit enter. So now it's scalloped um, on every corner. And I can take that and maybe change the outline width a little bit. So now we've got this nice border. But because it's on a master page or a master layer on the master page, if I go to page two, that same border is there. So I only have to add it to the master layer and it'll now be on every uh, layer that I want. If I wanted to have a different border or different things on odd pages versus even pages, then we would do the same thing, you know, where we did it down here with even or odd pages. And I could even switch this if I right click on it. I can say that I only want it to be on even or odd instead of all. But I want it to actually be on all. So anything that we add to this border layer then gets shown on on every page so let's just say that in, you know if I wanted to I could make a a white box here and I'm gonna take out the outline so now I've got a break and then I can just add in my copyright information so I'll do a parenthesis C parenthesis and hit space and it'll change it to the C um, and then type in Memorial Designer. And I'm just going to change my font. We'll just do. Uh, we'll just do Arial for now, I guess. And let's go to something even smaller. Okay. So I've added that in there. So now if I go back to page one, you'll see, huh, look, there it is. It's on every page. Because that's on a master layer, it's going to be on every page. So another cool thing that you can do is add page numbers. If you go up to layout and say insert page number, you've got the option still of whether you want it to be on all pages, odd pages, even pages, or just on your active uh, layer. Uh, if you do it on the active layer, it won't be on every page. It'll only be on the one that you're on. But I want to go ahead and add it to all pages. So I'll add it to all pages. And because this was my default font, MD Roman at one inch, that's what it came in as. But you can go ahead and switch it to whatever you want. I'll go back to Arial just to match uh, this font down here and go back to well, that may be too small let's go a little bit larger okay so there's our page number if uh, I if I go back to page one you'll see the one runs into the design so that's probably not a good place for my page number to be so let's say I brought it down here instead to the bottom right hand corner now if I go back to page one you'll see that number one is down there see how that works Okay, so that's pretty cool. Every uh, every page you create can have numbers, it can have its own border, and yet all of the stuff that's on your page um, can be different, which I think is really neat. Um, another thing you can do is, if, if I were to have done this with a ton of artwork, you can go up to um, View and say Page Sorter View, and that would give you a a view of every single page that you've got. You can mess with how big your tiles are here if you want to do small ones, medium or large. Um, and then if you end up wanting to rearrange pages, you can just click and drag them to rearrange their order. Um, this one, my page name is actually not page one because I have it set. I have a, a tool set to actually, whenever I start a new document, it's going to name it today's date and so that's why it's showing that but you can always change that if you want to um, if we go back to regular view so down here it's uh, the page name so if I were to just right click on, on that and rename I can just say page one and that way we've got page one and page two okay um, yeah so that pretty much shows um, how to use thumbnailer to get our files onto the page. Um, if I were doing full layouts, let me just do that really quick to see, uh, to show you the difference. So I'll go back to tools, macros, run macro, go back to thumbnailer, 
click start. And this time in browse, I'm going to go to my uh, layouts now. And I will just go ahead and do uh, single flats. No, let's do companion dies. So I'll do companion dies. And the dies I want to be able to see better. So I'm not going to do an inch and a half. What I'd probably want to do is, you know, eight inches wide by four inches tall or something. Then we're going to get uh, two of them on a page. Or I. I Maybe it could go a little bit smaller than that, but anyway. So now if I click, uh, I'll just add in a thumbnail frame for this, just so you can see what it does. And I will also add in the folder uh, names in the file caption so that you can see what that does as well. But now that I've got that set, we'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'll move this over to the side. And I should have uh, gone back out of the object manager just to see if it would speed things up. Because I think normally when you have the object manager open and you're doing macros, it tends to slow things down a little bit. But that's okay. So we've got 26 of these. Um, so we're nearly there. Just for the sake of time, I'll go ahead and pause the video while it does the, the next half. Okay, so it has now finished. Um, I'll go back to view and say page border again so I can see the full page border. And now if we look at our page, so we've got uh, two designs per page and it threw in this um, the border. Like I said, I, I typically wouldn't do that but I just wanted to show you what it was uh, going to do. And I thought that we had checked to do the uh, the folder name, but it's not showing the folder name, so maybe I accidentally didn't check that. But either way, that's uh, that's how that works out there. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it uh, helps you make your own design books. And if not, you know, I can always make one for you. <laughs>